drop out, right? And then later you could have another turbidite come down. Because they're each triggered by some kind of event that sends all this sediment down and some high energy flow down there. Okay? So, when it says sketch a single turbidite se sequence and describe the rocks in it in the space next to the photo, I'm asking if you remember what you saw in that picture, okay? And remember it was coarse at the bottom and then it fined as you went up, right? And in the coarse part on the bottom, what did they have at the very base? What were those sediments? Do you remember? The very base of the turbidite sequence. What kind of sediments do they have? Do you remember? Were they shales? Were they sand? Were they sand? Even they showed some like conglomerate type stuff. Plastic, basically. Right. And so, you know, I'll just point out that there are some of those on this. <coughs> okay. And then they showed some sandy stuff above that, right? And then they had some laminated sand and silt with some ripples in it, okay? And so if you don't know what ripples look like, you might want to look at this section because that's what these little laminations represent, are ripples, okay? And then as you go up higher in the section, it went to more laminated um, silt and then finally muds at the very top, okay? And so that's what I'm asking is for you to make the connection between that just totally idealistic drawing and what you would see in an actual core when you have tur turbid flow like this represents, okay? And so if you go through here and look at each of these units, you might think about, you know, what is a, how thick is, are the term, are the turbidites? And it says here, these are termed thick turbidites. Where in the turbidite band would you expect to find thick turbidites? So what I'm asking you to think about is, how thick is a unit of turbidite? Why would it be thick? Why would it be thick? What do y'all think? Why would I get a thicker turbidite versus getting a thinner turbidite? Because larger particles. Larger particles. That's part of it. Why would I have larger particles? versus smaller particles, more energy. So if I have more energy, where am I on the fan or on the slope, on the continental slope? Where am I? Am I close to the shell or am I far away from the shell? Um, the most energy would be right at the end of the shell or right at the... Right, because where is all this sediment coming from? Right, so... It's coming from the... Right, so it's coming from the edge of the shelf, because you can imagine you've got this shelf that goes down into the slope, and so you've got rivers and deltas bringing all this sediment out here, and it sort of stacks up on the edge of the shelf, and it gets what we call like sort of overpressured and overburdened, it's stacking so fast it's got all this water in it, and then all of a sudden, poof, you get this slide or slump, just like a landslide, you would see, right? And so all of a sudden, all that sediment goes into a turbid flow, because it's all mixed with the water, and gets carried down the flow. And so your comment that you might have coarse sediments and a thick turbidite flow, because the coarse sediments would be closer to the source of the sediments, right? It's just like when we talk about in a river, when the river dumps on the ocean, the coarse stuff falls out first. So you're actually closer to the energy source, right? As you get further away, you're going to only have small, the small stuff that's taken out there, okay? So y'all have a good lead into this, so take, take a good look at these and... Now, like this 